Welcome, everybody. Um, I'm Teddy Awusu, Program Coordinator from the Office of Minority Health Resource Center. Um, I'd like to welcome you all to our webinar series. Today we will be hearing from Luisa Castaneda, and she will speak on our webinar, Text for Baby, a resource in your community. Luisa is the Multicultural Outreach Manager for the Text for Baby program at the National Healthy Mothers, Healthy Babies Coalition. She has worked with us um, before, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. Um, she works with the government on the state level as well and with nonprofit organizations. She has extensive experience as a community advocate, interpreter, and leader in public health. Um, as always, this webinar is being recorded. Uh, we will make it available on our YouTube page, um, the Office of Minority Health YouTube page. For those of you who um, missed this one and our previous webinars, you can view them on there. Um, for all the students uh, to get credit as proof that you watch the webinars on YouTube, once you finish watching the webinars, please include your name and your school in the comment section. You may comment as normal if you'd like as well, but just as far as our, for our records, please leave your name as well as your school's affiliation. Um, also, during today's webinar, if you have any questions, please write them in the questions box located on your control panel. Um, we will answer them after Louisa is finished with her presentation. Um, so without further ado, uh, Lisa, Louisa, sorry, you can take it away. Wonderful. Thank you very much, Teddy. And welcome everyone to the webinar. Thank you for taking the time to join us today. I know you guys are probably enjoying your break. Some of you are some of you are still wrapping up trying to go home. So we'll make this as painless as possible. Hopefully we'll share information with you today regarding the service so that you'll be excited to come back next semester to school and communities and to share information about what we do and how we engage moms. So for those of you who may not have heard of Texture Baby at all, we are a mobile health initiative um, that was launched in February 2010. So far we have been able to reach over 100,000 individuals. And what we do is that through text messages, moms receive information, support, um, appointment reminders, et cetera, to support a mom during the time of pregnancy and the first year of the baby's life. It's a really simple process to sign up. And the mom simply texts the word baby directly from their cell phone or bebe um, if they choose to have the service delivered in Spanish to the number 511411. The messages are free because we work with the mobile carriers through the CTIA Wireless Foundation. And they allow us to provide the messages for free to our subscribers. So our subscribers are not charged. We also um, work very closely with organizations that are experts in the field like CDC, ACOG, AAP, March of Dimes to make sure that the messages are accurate and relevant um, to the moms and their babies. So our organization really, our program is housed on the nonprofit um, Healthy Mothers, Healthy Babies. Boxiva is the leader company who handles the technology platform. And as I mentioned earlier, we can with the support of the Wireless Foundation as well as Johnson & Johnson. And the Department of Health and Human Services has always been a key advocate for Texture Baby, even since our initial conversations. Um, and we work very closely, or we have worked very closely with the White House Office of Science and Technology and the Great Healthcare Group. We have a very diverse ecosystem of partners from federal agencies, as I mentioned before, all the way down to state and local community or coalitions that are spreading the word through churches, community programs, outreach initiatives that are taking place, hospital systems, networks, you name it, we're pretty much working with many of the organizations in your communities or that or those in which your universities or colleges are located. So the content, as I mentioned earlier, is something that we work very closely with our partners. I wanted to reiterate that it's a simple process to sign up. The only data of information that we collect from moms are their due date or their baby's date of birth. We have to tie the messages to that date in order to be able to provide the appropriate or accurate information. 
in their zip code. We do not collect any race or ethnicity data. We don't ask any other demographic information such as income, etc. Because we found like this was the easiest way to get moms to trust the service and to really benefit from it. So as I mentioned earlier, they get three text messages per week during pregnancy and until the baby turns one. The messages or the individual can sign up for the service at any time during her pregnancy or the baby's first birthday. Um, I, also, I always like to make a parenthesis here to say that individuals who are not in fact mothers or have little ones or in pregnancy can actually sign up for the service. And, and I say this because a lot of times our nurses out in the field or community leaders want to find out what exactly we're sharing with moms, you can sign up as an observer. So if you text the word baby or baby from your cell phone, we will ask you to come up with a due date, of course, at a baby's date of birth, and you will, be, you will have to self-classify yourself, whether you're an observer or a dad or actually a mom or a relative or a friend. Um, and that helps us from our data perspective as well. So here are the mobile carriers that have agreed to promote the service for free. And I, we like to show this live because in a lot of instances, say, people, individuals would ask us, you know, I have Intellos or Cricket, does the work? And so we, you know, we like to use this to show that is an array of companies, not just the larger ones, who provide the service for free. Here's a list of what our messages address. So here's an example where we have evolved the messages. Originally, they were very short messages with information, perhaps a phone number. Um, and over time, they've evolved into including links like this one that has access to a mobile page. And these are pages that we've developed in partnership with organizations or other colleagues in the field to provide additional information. So it's a very hand, handy resource for moms. I always like to tell folks, you know, when we think about what does a woman leave the house with all the time? It's typically her purse, her keys, and her cell phone. Those are the three things we as women do not leave without. And if we do, we really contemplate on going back on getting our cell phones. Um, and so it's a great tool to really disseminate information. It's right at your fingertips. And as you guys are used to texting and using apps, et cetera, you know that it's very efficient to communicate with moms within your age group. Here's a perfect example of one of those mobile pages looks like. It gives you information on why it's important to wait until 39 weeks. And then at the end of that, there's a link to a video that you can then watch to get additional information on the importance of that. We also have a way, once you signed up for the service, set up an appointment reminder. So it could be, again, in English or in Spanish. You, ask, you provide your appointment date and a brief description. And then you get an appointment reminder message three days before the appointment and the morning of the appointment. And this has worked really well for our um, partners out in the field. They really want to get moms to have a reminder of their appointment that they set up for two months down the road or three months down the road. And this is a way, a way of doing that. I always joke with my moms in the community and I tell them, you know, if you want to set up an appointment reminder for when you have to get your hair done or something, you can always do that. But we, you know, develop this to support you as a mom in keeping up with everything that you have to do in that period of pregnancy and the baby's first year. So I wanted to share a couple of other unique features which from a public health perspective we find really cool in the sense that we are providing a message like what the ones you see here on your screen three days after you sign up. We ask you about your insurance status. So it's really more of a survey question you tell us whether you're insured through your employer, through Medicaid or CHIP, uh, veterans, military, or you have no health insurance or other. And then this is real sort of live, real-time data, excuse me, that we're able to collect through a text message. So this is where the public um, health geek in me comes out and is excited about the opportunity to share with moms additional information. So for those individuals who say to us, and that instant that they're uninsured, we send them a text message with very specific resources on how they could qualify to apply for Medicaid or CHIP and which number of website they should call and visit. And 
based on that, we then a week later ask that same cohort of individuals if they in fact apply for Medicaid or CHIP. So in the schematic that I put here, we're reaching or individuals who have responded to this, which is roughly 90,000 individuals, 52% of them have said that they are insured through Medicaid or CHIP. 14% of them told us that they're uninsured. And those individuals, which are roughly 5,000 individuals, half of them have applied for Medicaid or CHIP because of a text message that we sent them. So it's very much sort of sharing information and resources in real time and connecting moms to what we are able to provide to them in that instance. Another partnership that I want to talk to you about is a partnership that we launched with Rite Aid, where we were able to share information about the importance of getting a flu shot, and Rite Aid stepped up and they provided coupons for free flu shots. So moms would accept to get information about this flu shot. They, if they said that they were interested in getting a coupon, they would receive a coupon via text message, which they could then walk into a local Rite Aid or pharmacy, Rite Aid pharmacy in their community and get a free flu shot on this spot. We are very excited about the results uh, that this partnership has generated, not only about getting the information out, but also looking at it from a marketing perspective. Um, the coupon redemption rate was pretty high in comparison to other initiatives that are done in the marketing world um, with a large retailer such as Rite Aid. So for that, we included in here examples of some of our social media reach um, that both Texture Baby and Rite Aid did. Um, employees were trained to talk about their customers and distribute materials. And there was a how-to video that was distributed by Rite Aid and Texture Baby around community events. We have also about a month and a half ago launched our Texture Baby app. So the app is really focused on providing a complement to the information that we have on our text messages. It's another channel for accurate health information and our goal is really to increase the reach and retention of our program. So here's a quick timeline as to what the Texture Baby app does. It tracks baby's development, a to-do list, for what you have to do during pregnancy in the first year of the baby's life. There are polls. It allows you to set up appointment reminders. And there are specific topics that you can look information on that might be of interest to you, whether it be nutrition or weight gain or C-sections or different things that you have to consider as a woman during that time frame. And of course, users who download the app will be encouraged to sign up or to being included in the text messages as well. They can cancel that feature if they would like, but we really want to encourage moms to benefit from both. So I wanted to take a step back and really engage with you guys about um, the audience. And of course, our audience is typically African American and Latinas, a low income, pregnant moms, and women who have infants under the age of one. We are looking really at moms who are between 18 and 24-year-olds, um, although, of course, our subscribers range in many of the demographic areas that I did not mention. Why do we want to sort of approach that? Because we know, and you guys know this, I'm, I'm sort of preaching to the choir that the faster, way, the faster ways for communication among these cohorts are, of course, text messaging, using the Internet, email, perhaps more so in some arenas versus others. Um, picture downloads, and as you look at the African American and the Latino race in all of these categories, they tend to be higher. So this is how our communities are communicating and are really being connected to information and things that are happening in their communities and in a larger global perspective. So we know we are reaching our audience. We know that we are engaging moms early in the pregnancy. And this is really important from an MCH or maternal and child health perspective in the sense that it's important to connect a woman to information and resources, whether she planned her pregnancy or whether she had an accident and ended up being pregnant. It's important for us to let her know what's available, what's there, what type of care she should be looking for, what are her options, what should be happening to her body, what she can expect 
what type of support should she be looking for, et cetera. So we are really important, interested in reaching moms early in the pregnancy so that we can prevent preterm birth, so we can prevent babies for being born with really low birth weights or having unfortunate circumstances affect the mom. And we are also, of course, as I mentioned earlier, interested in reaching moms who don't have the flexibility of having a higher income. And so our service, we know from the data that we collect through the zip codes that we are reaching women in high poverty areas. We also know from a range of national evaluations and surveys that Texture Baby is making an impact in both health knowledge and preparedness. We know that moms have told us or have implicitly provided information through evaluations that Texture Baby is making a difference for them, that it's connecting them to resources, that it's facilitating a conversation with their provider or their doctor, that they're being reminded about a appointment reminder that they're really taking control of their life and sort of feeling better prepared to be mothers. And that's a huge thing for us, for us to say through a text message, we are connecting moms to information and resources. So here are some of those other details um, that I wanted to share with you. And then we have, of course, many, 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 many testimonials as to how we are impacting moms at the local community, the local community, and that's what we call our Team Texture Baby, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute. So I know you're very interested in learning how Texture Baby is promoted through social media and some of our successes there. So we have a very um, robust website. Our team here does a great job in keeping the website very user-friendly, making it very appealing to moms. We have expert testimonial, as I showed you earlier, and as you see on the right-hand side of the screen, we have Feature Mom, which it goes up every week or every other month. We change the stories that are there, and moms provide information and anecdotal things that we can share with other moms about their experience with the service. So we have multiple ways to really get our users or subscribers involved. We not only share their stories, pictures, and videos, we also encourage them to refer in a friend and to join Team Texture Baby. And Team Texture Baby is really a community effort that was developed by our marketing and outreach team here, I'm sorry, marketing and communications team, in order to bring about the voice of moms who have benefited from the service or grandmothers or aunties and really encourage them to promote Texture Baby um, within their networks and to learn from each other and share experiences and for us to foster and create a community to really bring about better um, testimonials out into our existing partner base. We have a large Facebook presence, more than 40,000 followers, and we've learned a lot. We have a lot of lessons learned from the Facebook outreach that we've done. Um, moms really like to have, you know, really cute things on Facebook. They want to be able to connect and say, you know, there's this cute picture of a baby's outfit on there and I really like it. So we share baby milestones, news, tips, etc. We try to make it not so specific on the service and sort of very um, directive to this is our resource that you can use is more we, we like to make it fun and social and then we also use it as a vehicle for feedback um, and we have used it as a survey on new communications so we get we put a little question there and we say are you interested in doing the following and if so what can we do and it's a great way for, for us to get real-time feedback from our moms so these are some more things that um, we've learned we know that health information and advice trumps games and celebrity news as a key priority for moms. So in other words, information on how to keep a baby healthy is more important. Moms like to share with other moms about their baby, and as a mom, I like to do that as well. So that's definitely something that resonates with, I think, all of the moms who may be listening or that you know in your family and network. And moms definitely seek advice from other moms online. Um, 
you know, I think within our communities, we also rely on, a lot on our families, but it's become more relevant for us to do a Google search on what's the best bike to buy my, chi to buy my child, or what should I do if I'm having an issue with breastfeeding, what have other moms done. Um, and sometimes within our own families, it might be a little bit difficult to navigate this subject without individuals getting offended because we don't listen to them, et cetera. So this is a great evidence-based tool for saying we are using social media to share information with moms um, that want it and need to have it right away. In Twitter, we also have a following. Our following is in Twitter is more for our partner base. So it's very different. Um, we use it more to create buzz about celebrities that are joining the effort or seeing big news that are happening and keeping those partner, partners engaged. So that is why our Twitter activity is very different from what we have in Facebook. And our followers are, of course, much smaller. Here are a couple of um, celebrity tweets that we have done in the last year, year and a half. Um, Kourtney Kardashian, Kardashian sent out a tweet, Juliana Rancic, Lala has also sent out a tweet, and we have other individuals from the sort of political um, stratosphere to others who have really incorporated their efforts into what Texture Baby is doing and have supported us along the way. We also this past year launched a partnership with Brandy. And our goal really is for her to become our celebrity ambassador. So she has created as part of that role six videos for online use. Those have been placed on air on both cable, national, and local media, as well as websites. We have a strong group of bloggers that we engage in our online magazine. And the PSAs range between 60 and 30 seconds. There was a Mother's Day video message. And Brandy sort of selected her favorite Texture Baby tip. And that was included in some of the messages. Um, and there's a lot of m promotion that's taken place over the last year around this Brandy um, ambassador and the partnership that we have with her. So to promote, as I mentioned to you in a couple of instances, you know, Texture Baby is targeting moms during pregnancy. Also, moms who have a baby under age one. We do send free text messages that are timed to the due date or the baby's date of birth. And it's really simple to sign up. You simply, or the individual simply text the word baby to 511411 or BEBE -B -E in Spanish. And then they start receiving three text messages that are free during pregnancy and until the baby's birthday. I do like, want to mention rather that Anyone can stop the service at any time. They simply text the word stop very much like any other texting program. Um, the individuals, sh again, should not be charged. But if they are, in fact, sometimes charged, they, we encourage them to contact their provider, their company, and find out why they're being charged. Sometimes there are technical errors that, or human errors that take place. So that's something that comes up from time to time, and we do encourage our moms or moms to be to contact their provider if that is the case. Um, and you know, we wanted to make it easy for you to think about as community educators, um, peer to peer educators, excuse me, to think about how you can spread the word out. I know that you are very busy between school and perhaps an additional roles and responsibilities that you have through school and outside of school. So we wanted to take this opportunity to share with you how you can get the word out. Hopefully you can encourage other organizations within your campus and your communities to share about Texture Baby. Um, we would be more than happy to connect you to individuals within our team who are working perhaps in your state or in your communities to give you resources that you could use for those trainings to facilitate conversations, webinars, and materials for free. Um, but we, of course, always in, want to incentivize you to train community leaders or just engage them in a conversation. Uh, it's been quite challenging for us to engage the faith-based community and youth space and civic organizations just because there are many around the country and many that we are not sort of pervy to. 
And as young leaders and advocates within your own communities, we would love to sort of work with you to make that happen. There are materials that you can share with them, even if it's going to a small breakfast, we can provide you materials, a poster, a flyer for you to share, and to train them to be touch or baby advocates in the community. Um, because we recognize that many voices would really make an impactful effort to promote touch or baby. And definitely for you to utilize social media as you, within your different platforms to distribute information around Texture Baby in whatever organizations you happen to be partner of or in personal ways that you can incorporate Texture Baby promotion. And of course to share information with family and friends and to provide this information to individuals so that you, they can try it out and you can hear from them firsthand how the service is benefiting them. And of course, if there's feedback that they would like to provide to us, you can direct them to our website and have them do so. What I'm showing here on the right-hand side of the screen is a web enrollment button, which we have on our website. And you guys can also take that code. It's very simple code that you copy and paste very much like you do a YouTube video. And you can embed that in any of your posts or social media on blogs, et cetera. So I would encourage you to do that if feasible. And what this allows is that individuals who go to your website or your blog post can click on it and immediately be directed to a link that would allow them to sign up from your website. So that's another tool for you to keep in mind to use within your efforts and to also share within your community partners and organizations um, across your realm. So I believe this is all the information I had to share with you around Texture Baby. I would like to pass it on over to Teddy now. I'm not sure if there are any questions that you would like for me to address um, or any comments that you want me to, to address at the moment. And I'm not sure, Teddy, do you want me to pass this back to you to sort of figure out if there are questions here? Um, sure, Louisa. Uh, we have a few questions actually. Um, so I have one. Is the Text for Baby app available for both iPhone and Android devices? It is, yes. You can go both to the iTunes and Google Play stores and download those. Okay, cool. All right. Um, another question we have is about Facebook. Um, do you have any tips? I guess you you addressed this, but you can go over them again. But do you have any tips um, as to how Text for Baby makes Facebook more engaging and more fun? Something maybe um, the PPEs can use? Yeah, of course. Um, and you know, I'm not the expert on this, but this is just what I remember that our marketing director has shared with us in the past. Um, I believe that Facebook originally, which is used to take a lot of content that was sort of like, oh, there's an event happening, or this is you know, a text message that we sent out, which was a little bit repetitive. Um, what we realized is that we need, definitely need to have some, someone and resources dedicated to that, because social media, even though it might be fun and games for us, it, it requires a lot of work to plan and to really think about the strategy. So some of the things that they did is that they, in fact, survey moms about what they wanted to find out through Facebook, how they are using Facebook. And as I showed earlier in some of the survey data that we have, um, moms really want to find information that's applicable to their health and that of their babies. They, I mean, they want to know about Kim Kardashian, they want to know about, you know, Beyonce's baby, et cetera, but they really want to know, you know, why is my baby doing this? So we try to incorporate some of the funny stuff with and cute stuff like showing, as I said, if you visit our website, you'll see we have like little baby outfits or, you know, little cute things that are posted on our website and our team um, creates. But we really try to incorporate a lot of, you know, this is what can happen if you're not getting your flu shot and, you know, to show a direct resource that moms can click and visit as they're scrolling to their Facebook page. So. Those are a few of the examples. If you wanted or an individual wanted more specific information, I'll be more than happy to put you in contact with our marketing team and they can provide 
so more of the lessons learned sort of and step-by-step -step process um, when applicable to your respective question. Great. Uh, Louisa, before we get, uh, we move on to the next few questions, can you give everybody your information? How can they contact you? Yes, of course. My email is very easy. Um, if you just remember that it's Luisa, so it's Luisa is spelled in Spanish, which is L-U-I-S-A, no O in Luisa, at H as in house, M as in Mary, H as in house, B as in boy, or hmhb.org. So Luisa at hmhb.org. Okay. Um, thank you for that. Uh, we have a, a good question here. Um, they're all good questions, but we have a really good question here. Um, are fathers or fathers-to-be um, with children able to use this app? Yes. So um, definitely they can use the app. The, the only thing and something that we've um, not necessarily struggled, but we discussed for a while was having a messaging system for moms and then having a separate one for dads. The issue why we haven't been effective in reaching dads is because, of course, our messages talk about things like your breasts are changing because your body is changing as you have this little creature inside of you and you're definitely things that are happening to you. And so dads don't want to hear about how their bodies are changing or how their wives' bodies are changing, etc. They want to hear it from a different method. There's a methodology now with the fatherhood piece as to how we should communicate with dads, what type of tone we should use, messaging, images, etc. And we don't at the time have the resources to set that complete track aside. But we do know of dads who use the service because they want to keep up with what should be happening during the pregnancy, what should I expect as a father. So within the text messaging protocol, when you sign up, it will ask you if you are, as I mentioned earlier, if you're a mom or a mom-to-be, um, a pregnant woman rather, if you are a dad or if you're a friend of the family, et cetera. So you can say you're a dad. And we have included a few random messages in the protocol that are speaking directly to dad as to what dad can do to support mom during pregnancy and what can do what can the dad do to support the mom and the baby post um, birth. And so those are some of the things that we've done. We have also a website um, or a sub page dedicated within our website to dad, but we're not at the point to be able to say this is a dad friendly slash mom completely friendly um, app. We want to get there, but we're not quite there yet. Um, but we do recognize the importance of having the fathers be brought into the picture. And so we've taken the baby steps um, to make that happen. Okay, great. Thanks, Louisa. Um, we have a few more questions coming in. Um, I'm, sure. I'm going to try to go through them uh, quickly. Uh, are there similar text messaging services at, um, to Text for Baby that Text for Baby is affiliated with? So I guess they're asking, are there any um, other health-related right. text messaging services? Well, I mean, in the public health sort of stratosphere, there's, there's a novel, um, this is something new. It's now being sort of um, labeled as mobile health, mobile as in M-O-B-I-L-E health. Um, where you're using a cell phone to communicate and get information. So there are many, 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 many different um, programs that are being launched, many, many, many initiatives that are happening to go from diabetes to cover the gamut around health conditions, and pregnancy, of course, being one of them. There are a lot of interventions like this that are shaping up or that have taken place abroad. And if you do a little bit of research individually, if you're interested, some of the efforts that are shaping up um, in Africa, in many countries in Asia, in Latin America, there are many initiatives that are using texting to communicate information in real time, provide advice, connect individuals to resources, et cetera. In the United States, this is the first of an, at a national sort of scale. There are many around the country that are being developed around pregnancy, about dads, about, as I said, smoking cessation, 
diabetes treatment. Um, there are also uh, quite a few that are coming around nutrition, if that's something that's of interest to you. There's also a few that are being developed around text messaging for early learning initiatives for little ones between 0, 3, or 0, 5. Um, and so there are a lot of things that are happening, and this is why we're so excited to be in the field. Um, we are unique in the sense that we're the first national sort of scalable initiative, but there are many that are shaping up, and it's a promising field. So I would definitely encourage you guys to do a little bit more research about um, mobile health in general. Thanks. Um, so we have a family nurse practitioner going into pediatrics, and she was wondering how she can use this for her patients. Yes, of course. Um, so I would definitely recommend you to speak to your supervisors within your, I'm not sure if you're going into a, a private practice or um, a hospital base, so it, you know, definitely speak to your colleagues about how you can promote and bring the service. There, as I mentioned, a team of us who work on the implementation of Texture Baby at the state and local level. It would be more than happy to, I would be more than happy to connect you to those individuals or the appropriate individual within your state. And there are materials that we can share with you. There's definitely a lot of technical assistance that we could provide to you, your colleagues, and all your staff to get the information out. But then, of course, I would recommend that you sign up for the service yourself so that when you are speaking to your clients that are coming in to your patients, that you can say, you know, this is great texting service slash app that you can download. It will give you information. It's free. And it's something that I've used myself, and I know what it's providing to you. So I would recommend that you use it. You can also set up an appointment reminder for the next time you have to come in to see me. And it's in English and in Spanish. Um, so I could definitely go on and on and on how to promote this to your patients. Um, but I would love to start a conversation with you know, connecting you to the right individual where you are going to be promoting this and figure out what other partners as well in the community may already be promoting the service, whether it be a Healthy Star Coalition or another provider or wherever you happen to be. I'm sure we have individuals, and if not, then maybe you become our ambassador in that community. Okay. Um, we have another question. Is there a method to track data regarding location of clients and if certain areas have low enrollment, and if yes. so, will that be made available on Text for Babies website? So there is a way to track that, and I apologize, I didn't, I did not show a slide on that because um, I was going more the social media focus. But so we, as I mentioned earlier, we do collect zip code, we collect due date, we collect language, whether you want the messages in English or Spanish, and so that data is put into what we call a portal. So anyone, any individual organization who joins the partnership, and to join the partnership there's no financial commitment or anything. You simply say that you're going to promote Texture Baby in the best way that you can, um, and we can, you know, utilize and list your name on our website as a community partner. Um, and then, of course, you're going to be sort of faithful to some of the things that we have in terms of not misusing our logo or misrepresenting us, you know, very basic things. But once you become a partner, if you want to have access to the portal, we would then have to have you signed a data use agreement. And this would be a agreement that we sign with an individual per organization to see that that individual would have access to the data portal. The data that's contained within the portal is the identifiable data, so you wouldn't be able to track, you know, Mary Smith who lives on 6th Street, but you would be able to show at all the way down to the count, the zip code level, how many individuals have enrolled in Touch Your Baby at a specific zip code. And that's how if we go back to some of the data that I showed you earlier, how many moms were reaching at the poverty level, etc. That's how we're able to find out and coll collaborate with the sort of the census data that we are reaching moms at a low poverty level. Um, I mentioned earlier we do not collect any race or ethnicity data, so we wouldn't be able to provide that to you. And when you do sign that data use agreement, there is a team who can support you and there's a training that's given on how to access the portal, how to download the data, 
it's a very easy portal to use and it's very user friendly. So if you wanted to have the opportunity to do that, please also contact me and I will main, make the possibility of, um, we can discuss the possibility of you accessing the data once you join the partnership. Okay, Louisa, we have a couple more questions. Um, sure, no problem. Has any more questions? Cool, cool. If anyone has any more questions, um, please feel free to type them in. We're going to stay on for a little while longer, maybe uh, five to seven minutes. Um, so we have a question here. Since the messages continue up to infant's first birthday, are they geared mainly towards the baby's health? And the second part of that question, is text for a baby, ex will, are they thinking of expanding their messages to postpartum health tips? So um, the protocol messages, meaning the messages that we have pregnancy and up to the baby's first birthday, really revolve around the mom and the baby. So I can't, we can be sort of very like, you know, only pregnancy messages speak about the mom and then post, you know, the messages post birth speak about the baby. No. We are very cognizant that both need support and so during pregnancy there are messages that of course refer to the baby as in the baby right now his eyes are developing or his voice cords are developing. He should start kicking by now. He should start moving and I'm saying he is generic. Do not, please don't take this the wrong way. Um, but. We also, of course, have tons of messages that talk during pregnancy about the health of the mom, the support that she should be looking, meaning going to her doctor's visits, making sure that she has someone to talk to. And in post-birth, we also have a range of messages that, of course, focus on the mom, but the both focus on the baby. The ones that are focusing on the mom are very explicitly on postpartum. We that's sort of about one of the key areas that we have been focusing in the last year and thinking about how to not only provide resources for moms, because there are a lot of things that happen once you've had your baby. And I can talk about this from experience. You know, you go through an emotional roller coaster. So we want to make sure that moms have the resources, that they're informed, and they should connect to someone if they're feeling sad, there's a phone number they can talk to, or that they should feel empowered to at least raise their voice and speak to someone they trust. Um, Definitely making sure that they go to the postpartum visit for a range of things to talk about birth control, to talk about options, to talk about a lot of things, so including how are they physically doing, how is breastfeeding going, et cetera. Um, and then, of course, you know, thinking about the baby. The baby should be doing such. The baby should be lifting its head, moving its eyes. They, they should be following movements. They should be speaking. They should be saying words, starting maybe to crawl or take baby steps. They should be going to the following appointments. They should be getting the following flu shots. So it's very, very much a public health approach to empowering moms and getting them the information they need. And I think a lot of times, you know, there are things that I think we take for granted as, as individuals in terms of, oh, I know that, I knew this. But there are things that even myself, and I consider myself a pretty well-educated um, individual that has been working in public health for a while, I consider myself pretty well informed. And there were things that the messages provided me information on. So I definitely encourage you to sign up for the service and to get a feel for what we're providing so you can then speak and say, I have ownership of this. I know what this is providing. And of course, we are always thinking of, you know, what's the next way that we can improve the messages and the service. So that's something that we are always also considering because our service is not perfect. And if it is, then you know, we're set. But no, our service is always this improvement. It's something that we're working with our partners and our folks to really make sure that it's a great service all around. Hello? Hello. Oh, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you now. Sorry about that. Um, so in addition to that question, we've had a, a couple of questions that center around that whole theme. Um, this is our last question here. And um, you've, you've kind of addressed this before.
for, but can you just give people the information on how they can receive data, um, your reach, your reach data um, from Text for Baby, and also answer if Text for Baby is gathering data in terms of impact of the service on mental health. So on mental health, we don't have any specific health outcomes that we're looking at directly. Right now, the Texture Baby service itself has evolved in a way that we are trying to collect data on the impact of health behaviors on flu and making sure that we're encouraging moms to go to the postpartum visit. And so this is a visit that happens between six to eight weeks after they have had their baby. And it's a very important visit within um, the maternal and child health world for many, many reasons, um, many of which I mentioned earlier. We want to make sure that the mom's doing OK. They're, we want to address her mental health. Uh, we want to figure out if she had a C-section, how is that going, if she's healing appropriately, does she have the support system, et cetera. So this is why that visit is so important and why many of you perhaps are asking about it because you've heard about it to multiple through multiple arenas, through your work, et cetera. And so that's the only sort of health behavior data that we collect. We, at this point, are both piloting that data in some states, um, including Massachusetts, Louisiana, Ohio, California. And um, we are not able to make that publicly available data. In the very near future, there are publications that are going to be distributed around our success within the flu data. And we hope to have data soon after a pilot is complete around the postpartum visit. The access to the data portal, which I mentioned earlier, is an agreement that you have to sign as an individual or as an organization to look at the data. We can provide um, data to you in this very specific data that we provide to you. It's unidentifiable data. And you will be trained on that. You will have to first join as a partner. And you can go to texturebaby.org. You can click on where it says Partners. And you can fill out to become a outreach partner. It's a very simple form, very simple requirements and process. And once you do that, you will be invited to connect to one of our team members. And that individual can then share with you the data use agreement for you to have access to the portal. You will be trained, and you'll be receiving credentials on the accessing to access the portal. But we don't have um, sort of the health data that you maybe were referencing or I understood was being referenced in the question that is publicly available at the moment. But our partners do use the data that we provide through the data portal um, in a way to say, this is our reach in the community and perhaps the lack of reach in the community. And this is where the zip codes or counties that we should be really targeting. And that's a great way that I know our partners do that. And if Teddy, is it OK for me to show one more slide while you're going through logistics? or? Sure, sure. Let me go ahead and switch yeah, it over to you. Thank you. I just want to, um, and I apologize, I'm going to show you guys my screen for a few minutes. While I look for that slide, I pretty much wanted to just share with you like some of the examples of how that data is being asked. And some of you have very specific questions that I want to leave you wanting more, in a sense. So, so here's an example of a similar presentation that I did last week. And I was able to pull data for Florida. So if some of you are in the state of Florida, here's some of that data. I'm able to show how many individuals have enrolled in a county. Um, and partners really want to see this. They want to see how many individuals have enrolled. I'm able to show in also that Medicaid module that I showed you earlier, how many individuals in Miami are answering that Medicaid question. And so these are some of the things that our partners, there's some limitations as to the data that we can share. And these are some of the things that our partners are able to do. They're able to take our data and really here's the same data for Broward County, which is right next to Miami. So partners are able to then figure out how many months are we reaching, what is our population that is being reached, what do they look like to the Medicaid module data. 
um, what counties of zip code should we be working on reaching. And this is how partners really use the data. And the other great thing is I mentioned is that it's real time. So the portal is being updated. So right now it's almost 3 o'clock. So we pretty much have data up to today at 1 in the afternoon or something, you know, something crazy to me, which seems like something crazy, um, that you have data from very much real time. Um, and this is why I love the work that I do and I love the initiative and I hope you guys will continue to think about questions and contact me about how you can integrate this within your initiatives professionally and at school um, and community-wide. Okay, so well that... Great. Um, that is it for the questions. Um, we'd like to thank you very much, Louisa, for joining us. Thank you for your time. And thank you, everyone, who held on and those who asked questions. Um, I hope this information Louisa provided was valuable. And again, thanks, everybody, for joining. Thank you.